Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be five minutes. Today in the news, my favorite angel killing witch is back. In a trailer released this morning, the totally over-the-top, completely insane antics of Bayonetta return with the third game in the franchise, now with a real release date, October 28th of this year. Now, if you're going to watch the trailer and you want to try to make any sense of it, uh, what are you doing? That's not what this game is. What Bayonetta is, is Platinum Games having to put out a press release about the naive angel mode, which they say by setting this mode on, you may be able to play in the living room without creating an awkward atmosphere. Oh, did you forget? Her outfit is made of her own hair. So when she uses her hair to attack or do something crazy, she's naked. It doesn't really show off anything, but as the quote says, when your very religious grandma walks in the room to you shooting angels with a half-naked woman, I'm sure pearls will be clutched. Well, no more. You can turn this mode on and everything will be fine. You prude. In other news, Supermassive Games, the studio behind things like The Quarry and Until Dawn, the Dark Pictures Anthology, all that stuff has been acquired. In the continuing saga of game studios being bought up by bigger game companies, Supermassive joins the ranks of many that have come before it. Nordisk Games, a company that you may not have heard of, they own studios like the ones behind Just Cause and Castlevania Lords of Darkness and some smaller Danish and Finnish studios. Well, they now bring Supermassive into the fold. While the terms of the acquisition haven't really been disclosed, it's safe to say that the now 300 employee strong Supermassive is pretty happy with the deal. What that means for upcoming titles like the Dark Pictures Anthology? Well, probably nothing, but we will see. What that means for new episodes of The Quarry? Well, calm down, they're finally here. Thank you for your patience. We were being safe. COVID is a thing still. People. In other news that really isn't all that important, but is actually kind of fun, Twitter has released a list of games that people are searching for on the platform, but also where those people are searching from. Now that we've passed the halfway point of the year, Twitter has come out with a ranking of the top games and locations of where those games are being talked about for the year 2022 so far. As I'm sure will not come as a shock to anyone, Japan and the States come in at one and two, and Korea is third. I'd love to know more, and I really want to deep dive these stats, because you have to imagine and at some point, it's really more about population, and then those people in the population who have phones, and those people with phones who play games, and those people who play games with phones who are on Twitter, that kind of thing. And so I'm sure those numbers would be super fun to look at. When it comes to the games themselves, Genshin Impact and Wordle are one and two, and that makes sense, because I've had to mute so many people about Wordle that I may not have a normal timeline again. As for Genshin Impact, well, keep on cosplaying, cosplayers. The shocker for me is that Elden Ring is so low. Below Final Fantasy? I mean, look, I like Final Fantasy, and I guess if I had to make assumptions, it's because Final Fantasy XIV had a huge launch at the end of 2021, and Final Fantasy XVI got a trailer recently, same with the Final Fantasy VII remake, and so maybe it's an aggregate of all the Final Fantasies? I guess that makes sense. But surely based on the way games internet was talking at the beginning of 2022, you would think Elden Ring would be higher, right? But nope, it's anime and word games. Speaking of anime and word games, ooh, that's not true. Maybe. Patreon.com slash Jesse Cox. Sure. Where you can hang out with Sarah Jones, Sarah Eaton, and Fabian Morales. Anyway, that is it for the show. Thank you so much for all the likes and subscriptions. I see those numbers going up. Thank you for uh, just being part of the fandom and being here. You're amazing. Please, by all means, share, comment. Uh, hit the bell, do the things, I don't know, man. And I will see you tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.